introduced the scripture back in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. And we talked about there that in Proverbs 4, 23, he said, guard your heart for out of your heart comes the forces or issues of life. Now the force or issues of life, meaning the force of faith comes out of the heart. The force of love comes out of the heart. The force of joy comes out of the heart. What do you mean heart? We're not talking about the blood pump. We're talking about the inner man. We're talking about the person inside of that body. So the forces are coming out of there. Now you have a choice, but you take God's, you take God's choice by faith. Knowing that if you do act good, when somebody's screaming at you, that God's gonna come in on the scene and work it out. This is a good way to make folks grow up, isn't it? So what am I saying here? The enemy knows now he's got control of the high places and he's given control of the high place to whomever he will. But he knows that if you get up to the, that certain point in that high place, whoever's at the top of that mountain is gonna control the potential that's in that mountain. So you're going to take control of that media and they won't be able to show certain things on television. You're going to be able to control the politics and so forth and somebody get up there and forget about God. I mean, what's that all about anyway? I mean, when you take an oath, don't you take an oath and put your hand right on here and lift this other one up. Well, what you putting your hand on there for? This one says a man should be married to a woman. This, that's what this one, no, 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 listen, listen, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not hating, I'm not hating, I'm not hating. Can I just talk about what this one says? I'm talking about if you're going to put your hand on this one. See, why, why put your hand on this one and then don't do nothing it says? You're going to put your hand on this one. If not, take this one away. Get yourself a storybook. Get yourself a novel or something like that. And just, you know, but if, if you're going to put your hand on this one right here, that's all I'm saying. Because what you're doing here is you're swearing to keep an oath of the Constitution. And the fact of the thing, the Constitution comes out of here. talks about the three levels and branches of government. That's where we got it from. We got it from right here. Nobody thought of that. We got it from here. But I got to send somebody to that office who's going to put his hand on this book. Come on now. And do what the book says. Can I keep going? So now we, <laughs> okay. So one thing we got to, we've got to go enter in. We've got to enter because we've got to enter that strong man's house and we're going to have to go through that. And we saw Jesus trying to cross over and that was Mark chapter four and verse 35 through 41. And he's crossing over, but there was a storm and the storm came up. And what happened to the disciples? They fell out. They started arguing with each other and then they accused Jesus that he didn't care if they died or not. Now, how many of you know Jesus is for you? Okay, so what has happened? They go into the strong man's house because when you get to the other side, there's a demoniac man there that's got tw at least 2,000 demons loaded in him. Now, what is he doing? He's, he's, he's controlling the waterway. He's controlling the waterway. He's controlling He's controlling the, 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 the currency. He's controlling the economics. He's controlling the fish of the sea. See? And, and, and this is the first thing that God gave Adam dominion over, the fish of the sea. It, 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 and so here, he's controlling that so you can't get by there naturally. You can't get by that naturally. Forget that. So what he need is some supernatural. He needs inside of him some, some fruit. He needs the fruit of love and peace and joy and so forth and so on. Come on, he needs all of that. But understand, he, he didn't choose 
chose God. God chose him. God chose him. That's what he said in, in, his, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse, verse, 13, verse 3. Praise God. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, he talks about the fact that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He said, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. When did he choose you? He chose you. He didn't choose you when you chose him. He chose you before the foundation of the world. And he chose you before the foundation of the world because he knew that you could go where he was going to tell you to go. Come on. And when he go, when you go where he tells you to go, he knows that you're going to be successful in that endeavor. Say amen to that. So he's got these love forces uh, uh, loaded inside of you. Now he's sending you into the place of the ungodly on purpose. Why? Because he's planning to raise you up in that environment. Now he knows that you have, have been chosen by him and you have, Lord have mercy. Can I say this? You were made in his image. I said, you were made in his image. Come on. You have his life. You have his mind. You have his nature. You have his spirit. You have his name. You have his ability. You have his disposition. You have his blessing. You have his faith. You have his love. All that's loaded in you. And when he, you go to a place, he's already decided what the outcome is going to be. Second Corinthians chapter two and verse 14. He's already decided what the outcome is going to be. Now, thanks be to God, which always causes me to triumph. He doesn't care what the opposition is going to be because there's going to be a clear distinction between you and the rest of the world that God has already designated victory for you. He's already designated that you are going to be rich. He's already designated that you're going to be invincible, indestructible, unstoppable, and indispensable. He's already called you a, 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 a joint heir with Christ. Now, I'm just saying here that all of a sudden people get there and somehow they put their hand on the book and it doesn't mean anything. Well, now, wait a minute. What's up with that? So the first thing that happens is I've got to go in. I've got to enter in. But entering in is not all there is. The next thing I've got to do is I've got to conquer. I've got to take control. So when uh, he got past the storm, he hit the next coast, which is Mark chapter 5. And now he runs up on a demoniac man. Now understand this man was being used by forces of evil. And Satan takes those who he would, whose mind and thinking is most easily controlled and puts them into a place to be able to control that whole mountain. But they're coming down because God can put up one and take down another. And I'm saying that as we go now into controlling these high places, it's kind of interesting. Some people don't want to go. And what they say basically is they want to hang around the church. Now, what do I mean by that? All of a sudden, it's time for them to serve God. And they talk about they're supposed to preach. Now, wait, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Now, I'm just saying that because maybe their purpose isn't preaching. They think because they love God, they're supposed to be in the pulpit. No, 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 honey, you got it wrong. You can love God in the pew. You, you, you can love God as a head of IBM. You can love God as a head of Commonwealth Edison. You can love God as a head of the school superintendent thing. So somehow they think because they have a love for God and so forth, they're supposed to be on the mission field. No, you don't. You're supposed to be right there where you are because you've, uh, you misdefine what a minister is. See, you got to understand that your ministry is just as important as my ministry. I'm just called to this. You are called to that. 
for this and you're going to have to give account for that. Well, I'm retired. You can't retire from the kingdom. You can't. You, you might have left that job, but you are not retired. There ain't no retirement in here. See, when you make a choice, your choice is going to affect somebody. Do you hear what I'm saying? And, and the devil always tries to counter God's choices. And one is a choice of faith, and the other one's going to be a choice of fear. One of them is a choice of righteousness, and I guarantee you the other is going to be a choice of unrighteousness. One of them is going to be a, a choice of courage, the other one's going to be some kind of other choice. My point to you is, is take God's choices. Because when you choose something, it's going to affect somebody else's life. Say amen to that. Now, the other thing, Satan does not want you to be raised up. Now, here's one of the biggest reasons why. Because if you get raised up, millions of lives shall be affected. I'm going to say that again. The one person who breaks through, now let's just say I'm preaching to you all of y'all and just one person in here breaks through to the top. Whoever breaks through, no matter what mountain they are in, millions of lives are going to be affected. And that's what the devil knows. If I can just get one of you to the top, if every church can work on just getting one person, train up everybody, but one going to break out the pack. One's going to say, I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to burn. I'm not going to back up. I'm not going to be lax. I'm not going to divorce. I'm not going to fornicate. I'm not somewhere they going to say, uh-uh, I ain't doing that. And when they say that, they are to the top. Now you need to hear this because a lot of people are not preaching it because it's not that popular. My friends, we're not looking for something that's popular. We're looking for something that pleases God. Am I right about it? This is your moment. God chose you. And I say this, you will make it to the top. I decree it in the name Jesus, the devil will not be able to stop you any longer. No threats going to stop you. No fear is going to stop you. Come on. No misfortune going to stop you. When you stumble your foot, you're going to get up, dust yourself off, and go again. Because a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up again. drunk with him. No, oh, you can go out. You know, just, just, you know, don't, don't, just don't get drunk. They're trying to make you stay there. But you're on your way. Oh. You're going to the top. Hey, because if I can get one of y'all to the top, I'm going to shift the climate. Shift to climate. 
So the first thing, enter in. The next thing, conquer. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. Conquer. He says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that what? Loved us, man. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And then the last one is possess. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, please. In verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring you into the land, which you go to what? Possess it. And has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, Hivites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than any natural man. You are not a natural man. You are super natural. Just give an example. I did a little study. Jebusites. Hebrew means to stomp on. What do they do? These are spirits that reinforce your lameness. Reinforce your, any inferiority that you might be carrying. They reinforce a caste system. A caste system is like over in India. If you're born in this lower caste, that's where you die. If you're born in the upper class, that's where you die. And they reinforce that system. So you can see that same spirit reinforces racism. It's a spirit behind racism. Call a spirit of division. And it is a Jebusite. It is a spirit. And if you've got a spirit, you can't fight him in the natural. Come on now. Though we war in the flesh, we do walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the what? Power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. That you may be able to what? Stand against what? The wiles of the devil. And then it says next in verse 12, glory to God, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Prince of college and crime. Well, that's enough. That's enough. I just want you to know, I just want you to know you're not up against natural living. That's why nobody else can take it but the church. So now I got to possess. Now what's the difference between possess? Possess means to take ownership. Watch this and control it from within. So notice what happens. Here's a man, madman of Gadara. Jesus runs to him. The man ran up to him, out of control. The demon spoke out of the man. Now notice what they were doing with the man. They were controlling him from within because he was possessed. Got it? So when you take the land, you're going to control it from within. You take the industry, you're going to control it from within. Come on now. It's you. Now don't think you're not smart enough. You are not, you're not stupid enough for God not to be able to use you. I, I, I don't mean that in an offensive way. I mean that in an offensive way. I'm saying Gideon tried to disqualify himself. Didn't he try to? He basically, he said, I'm, I'm the dumbest one around here. God said, I'm going to take you and show you who I am. I'm going to take you and you're going to lead Israel to victory. So don't try to disqualify yourself. Let me just finish this. Is this the right bunch I'm talking to here? So the last thing. What does the enemy try to do? Two things he doesn't want you to see about yourself. And they both come from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. 
Okay. Now realize there are all kinds of forces assisting the Gentiles to keep you from where you're supposed to go. But where are you headed? To the top. And God said, let us make man in our image after what? Our likeness and let them have what? Dominion. All right, let's just stop right there. What is image? It's the exact duplicate of kind. Okay. Now what is your image? Who are you made like? God. God. So God sends you here and part of your training is here and part is outside here because he's taking you to a new standard. Put it up there, please. Isaiah 62. He's taking you to a new standard. And he says, go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out of the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Here's a standard right here. And he's going to send you in there with a whole new standard. Say amen to this. But you have to know who you are. I said, you have to know who you are because there is a new standard of morality that you're going to lift up. There's a new standard of, 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 of your own economy, of your own physical well-being, of your own mental. You are a brilliant person. Come to God. Well, I'm calling this thing out. But also there is a royal standard. Glory to God. I said, there is a royal standard and it was never meant for you and I to grope for things or to struggle for faith. And I think one of the biggest reasons why people are struggling for faith is because their esteem is so low. You see, the first thing God does when he gets you born again is fellowship with you. And you can't fellowship with somebody not on your level. And most of the people of God, we have been born, we were born in slavery. Just like the people in Egypt, we were born out there where we were struggling, trying to make it, doing this, doing that, and so forth. But now you got born again. Now all of a sudden you're in a righteous family. All of a sudden you're in a royal family. All of a sudden now you're a race of kings. All of a sudden now, so I got to get my mind renewed to who I really really am. Say amen to that. So I got to listen to the Holy Ghost because he'll tell you, no, don't talk like that. That's not the way a king or queen should talk. He'll tell you how to eat, how to sit, your posture. He'll tell you your behavior. He'll tell you to lose some weight. He'll tell you, come on, don't, don't shout me down now. He'll tell you, he'll tell you what manner of speech you should have. He'll tell you, clean up your mind. He'll tell you, don't watch that. He'll tell you this. I'm just saying all these things because you now are royalty. And many times the enemy is trying to do maintenance on your ignorance of who you, who you really are. But you can't let him do that. You got to know who you are and who God says you are. I'm saying now that what we do is take your royalty by faith. Take who God says you are by faith. Because there are certain things that royalty won't do. There are certain things that royalty won't receive. There are certain things that where places royalty won't stay. There are certain things royalty won't drink. There are certain things royalty won't even eat. There are certain things royalty, come on now, and I'm telling you, let's work on our royalty a little bit. Let's work on who God says we are because we're in a royal family. We got now things, all we got to do is decree things now and they shall, come on, they shall, glory to God. Woo-wee! Look what he says, 
is here for if by one man's offense death reign by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ now if you put that up there in the amplified translation but because of one man's trespass lapse offense death reign through that one much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace unmerited favor and the free gift of righteousness putting them into right standing with himself they will reign come on as king in life through the one man Jesus Christ the Messiah the anointed one folks you inside are the spitting image of Jesus you that's why he said as a father he, he said as I am so are you in this world and I want you to know right now, God sees you as royalty. He's, he doesn't see you as somebody struggling in a slave camp, trying to make it. Come on now. And what you need to do is see yourself like that. Because other people going to see you like you see yourself. And you see yourself like that, there's certain things you won't allow. Come on, there's certain things you won't accept. The time for you living beneath your privileges uh, is over. This is God's hour for your power. It's time for you to rise and be counted by the Spirit of God as one of the children of God that's going all the way. This is the first commandment. I got to love God. Look what it said in verse 21. He that has my commandments and does what? Keep it them. It is he that loves me. So who loves God are the ones that does what God says. Say amen to that. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, love your husbands. Say amen to that. Now, this love is not a feeling, so I'm not looking for a feeling. I'm looking to obey God. Now, it says something interesting about this scripture because it says that he that has my commandments and keepeth them is he that loves me. Watch this. And he that loves me shall be loved to my father, and I will love him, and I'll manifest myself to him. You'll see a miracle taking place. God can do some things. Say amen to that. Folks, I'm looking in the Bible here. I'm looking where God gives people dreams. Come on, God told this one king that took Sarah in his, in his harem there in uh, Genesis chapter 20, gave him a dream, and this is what he told him in a dream. You're but a dead man. Man, that'll wake any man up. So you get up, whoa, now hold on. I'm just saying it, it's very interesting sometimes how we get in here and somehow we have applied these things to where God wants the application. Let's go at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're coming back to Luke. Let's 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's just look at that very quickly. Be ye followers of me, this is Apostle Paul, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances, we get down to that foundation again, as I deliver them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the who? Woman is a man. And the head of who? Christ is God. Now understand the head of every man is Christ. So if my wife has problems with me and I won't listen to her, she goes to my boss. Now, are, are you with me here? You see, the enemy wants you to leave the word. He wants you to leave the covenant that God promised you. God's going to take care of things for you. And what we've left is a supernatural when you leave the word. You left the miracle working power of God. And we're coming into situations in these last days that, hey, ain't no natural counseling going to get you out of that. You need some spiritual counseling. You need a miracle from Almighty God. Say amen to that. Folks, God can turn situations around that you have proved, you, you know that they're hopeless. And God can turn them around. And he can turn them around if you got faith in God. 
Faith comes by the Word of God. Don't turn your back on the Word. Get back in the Word. Now, don't be trying to evaluate it to see how is this going to work. I told you it's a higher principle. It's not intellectual. It's power-based. And as you work it, you'll see a manifestation in your life. Say amen to that. Now, I know some of y'all, you, it's going to take a little while to get this in you because you, you figured out a way, nah, nah, that my situation, my, my, you know, I'm exceptional. No, you're not. You fall right under this right here. Say amen to that. This word has changed better situations and more drastic or, or, or hopeless situations than you have. I can guarantee you right there. Now look at Luke chapter 6 for me, please. Yeah, this is going to be a marriage teaching like you ain't never heard it before. Look at verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I'm going to show you who he's like. He's like a man which built a house, dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat, stream beat vehemently upon the house. He could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. I like it underline one word in that paragraph, in that, in, yeah. When, in that verse, when, when the flood came, not if it came. I said not if it came. Marriages in these last days are under attack. The families raising kids in these last days is under attack. But God says, I'm going to send you in like a sheep among wolves. And they're not going to even be able to touch you. Not going to be able to touch your family. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say, I'm going to Satan proof your home. And look what it said. Now he said, for it was, he could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was what? Great. All right, notice these are two separate housing things. This is not housing project. This is, these are talking about lives here. So there's two separate situations. One, they heard the word and began to do it. And in doing, they then begin to put a foundation in their lives. And you know yourself, if you want to build a tall building, most of the work is spent on the foundation. Because you got to make sure that that foundation is sure in your life or in your family. And one of the things that you got to do is make sure you're doing it by the book. Noah just couldn't go get some wood. And when God told him, get a case of wood, he can't go out there and get some plywood. And God tells him to cut it for 30 cubits. He can't just cut it 25. Well, I, I'm going to save some wood. No, you got to take this word just like it said and put it in there. Say amen to that. Now, don't leave. I'm trying to teach you something here. All right. So a foundation. Look at Psalm chapter 11, please. And Psalm chapter 11 and verse uh, 3. Psalm 11 verse 3 says this. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And that's what the devil is after. He's after the foundation. The foundation is the truth of God's word that now you are practicing in your heart. And when God comes over here and says the man is the head, he didn't say head of any woman, he said head of the woman. So ain't no other man head of my wife. I'm, I'm here to hit my wife. Now, now, notice when he said head, he's talking about leadership again. Well, I just read you the principles of leadership from the Bible. So the head is responsible for everybody else. The head is responsible to set an example of love for everybody else. Say amen to that. 
The head is responsible for making sure everybody else is protected. The head is responsible for making sure that everybody else is provided for. That's the head. See, it had nothing to do with dominating that woman. The curse that came over Adam and Eve about the woman under that man had to do with the curse. And once we've been redeemed from the curse, the woman now is not walking under his feet. She's walking by his side. Say amen. And when the scriptures say that the woman is... It didn't say she's the weaker vessel. It says treat her as the weaker, meaning that you take care of her because in other ways she is stronger than a man. I don't know a man that can have a baby. I, I, I don't not want. Say amen. She has properties that he doesn't have. But she had been made more delicate. And she, when God went to the ground, he went to the ground once, not twice, once. Because the man is the fundus. He is the Latin word. He is the foundation of this house. And if he's out of place, something's out of place. Say amen to this. So God makes sure that he's taken care of the foundation and put some things in him that he's able to hold some things up. But if you switch roles, now somebody who's not built like that is trying to hold everything up and it weighs on them. Now, I know you have single family women handling the household. God gives a grace for that. He gives a grace so that you'll be able to, to, to shoulder those things, but you got to get in the Word of God and get God's Word and His strength for it. Lord have mercy. This is not a war between people. Say amen to that. This is a coming together. He didn't take 50% and 50% and put them together. He took a hundred percent of a man and a hundred percent of a woman and put them together. Adam didn't even know he needed a woman. Because he was whole. What has happened is you got people all fractured inside and hurt and so forth, and they gravitating towards somebody that they think can make up the difference in their hurt and get hurt again. You need to get whole, then you get married. Are y'all following what I'm saying here? The time you get married is when you ain't looking. You be looking too hard and that cause something missing. You, you trying to get off into some 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 mushy mushy <laughs> yeah I know what I'm talking about you it, it's a healing that you need because God makes you whole and then you move into there say amen to that that's that story about in in Luke chapter 16, where the man sat outside the gate, beautiful, uh, outside the gate of the rich man, and he was, he was poor, he was a beggar, and the Bible says he was immobile, and dogs came and licked his sores. Dog, why do dogs lick the place where they're hurt? They lick it because in their saliva is healing. But he's saying in this case, dogs. Meaning that when people are hurt sometimes, they attract dogs. They attract people who really don't mean them any good. Are you following what I'm saying? And you got to resist that until you step back, build a foundation. It's going to take a little time. But God can heal you. He can take you and make you forget what you even been through.
this is your time. You in here now, it, it may be taking just a little more time. But understand, God's got you on his mind. Because he knows what he's made you for. And you will reach your destiny. I said you will reach your destiny. This man was telling a story. I was listening to it. He was at a meeting and he was in the military. And he said his group of people over in Iraq, they were supposed to move in on the enemy. And this is when they captured uh, Saddam or whoever he was or, or, uh, or uh, bin Laden. And, and he was part of that thing. And he said their radios and everything went out. And he said they were supposed to meet the other group at a certain point at a time. But now they get behind time, the radio went out, and so forth and so on. And they start trying to fix it, and so forth, they couldn't get it, and the helicopter had to drop some parts in, they got it finally fixed, but now they're a half an hour late. And they said they moved on, and they got an accomplished mission or whatever have you, but they were told, it's good that you didn't come when you, came, when you were supposed to come. They said, why? Because there was an ambush set up for you, with IEDs that would have taken you right off that track, taken your life. Now notice, the delay was a divine delay. Sometimes, sometimes we think, we well, well, wonder what's happening here. I believe I received. Just be cool, honey. God is fixing you up. So when he puts you in it this time, ain't going to be no coming out. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Now, let me just cover one more thing. <laughs> Realize, when you get in a marriage situation and there's a situation that pops up in it, you got help. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call on me. And I'll help you. Over in Matthew 28, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Say amen to this. Over in Matthew 13 and 10, you have access to mysteries. Over in James chapter 1, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Proverbs 2 and 6 and 7, he's laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. Over in John chapter 16, verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. you got supernatural guidance. Over in, Lord have mercy, let's go to this one. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. First, see, that's what you need. You need the Word of God. You don't need somebody crying down there. Well, honey, you know, wait a minute. There's a way to solve that. Now, I'm not saying stay in some kind of abusive thing, but I'm saying don't be jumping so fast out of the whole thing. God may have a way he can turn the situation around in your life. You ask God first. Just don't do it without God's help. That's all I'm saying. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There has no temptation taken you. Temptation means test or trial. In other words, other folk have been through what you're going through. But God, somebody say, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to go through above, <laughs> be tempted, tested, and tried, above that you are able, but will with the temptation also what? What will he do? He's going to make a way to escape so that you'll be able to what? Baron Smith Wigglesworth's wife said, Smith, I need you to go to church with me. I told you not to go to that church down there. He was mean. He was angry. And next thing she said, Smith, I got to go to church tonight. Woman, if you go to that church tonight, I'm going to lock you out. She went, went on to that church, prayed with the prayer warriors, prayed for Smith, came back, tried to get in, locked out. What did she do? Get right down there, covered herself up with a coat, and went to sleep that night. Then came, Smith came, opened the door in the morning, get the paper or something, and she fell in. Oh, Smith. Oh, Smith. Uh, listen, uh, I can fix you breakfast and, and went on in and fixed him breakfast. Now, how could she do this? 
because she's got Galatians 5, 22 through 25. She got joy in the midst of sorrow. She's got love when everybody else would hate. She's got a supernatural disposition. It is given by God. Say amen to that. I'm here to tell you, nothing can stop your victory. God said, if he be for you, nothing can stand against you. That same man, Smith Wigglesworth, is now become one of the greatest apostles known on the face of this earth. And the apostle Paul was as mean as a rattlesnake. He was persecuting and consenting for Christians to be killed. But one day on the Damascus Road, as Paul was moving to get some more Christians, a light came from heaven. I'm telling you, God will make a light come from heaven on that man. Turn him around in three days. Glory to God. Now, why can this happen? Because love never fails. Never. Let me finish. I'm here to tell you right now. You're going through. God knows it. He's not left you alone. The only thing I can use as an analogy is a flight plan. And I remember when I was in missions in the Air Force, flying fighters. I got to go from one point to another, or in the States here. I've got to go to New York, to California. I don't know whether you know it or not, but along the way, winds come to blow you off. Along the way, some clouds, cumulonimbus clouds build up. And some of the tops are 55,000 feet. You dare not go through them because they got hailstones as big as softballs. Along the way, other traffic is coming. And the controller has to direct you around. He'll tell you, turn left, heading 270. Take you out for about four minutes and then turn back right, heading 090. Bring you back on course. What am I saying? If you check the computer, 90% of that flight was corrections. Constant. Constant. In marriage, we make mistakes. And 90% of it could be little corrections. Sweetheart, I, I didn't mean to say it like that. But if you keep your faith in God, you're going to reach your destiny.